Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting right underway here with Zarnax. Like 42 against V Resnor. Hope you enjoy. We have our first of the round of 16 matches going on right now. And uh, it should be a doozy. So right away we've got a town. It looks to be the good side of the river town of Saria. So we're going to be seeing a spell right out of the gate here. And uh, let me get some audio going. So uh, both of these runners went 3-1 and one in the uh, Swiss rounds. So what that means is they both were equally seated. I believe uh, V. Resner lost to Jam Evil uh, in an attempt to go 4-0. and o. And unfortunately, I'm not immediately familiar with who Zarnax lost to. We have the uh, shield spell right away for both of these runners. And they will uh, both elect up and A and uh, hop into this cave here. So absolutely no variance here. And they do have heart container cave. Let's see how they handle this orange diva. And one thing you may notice that was different from the earlier Swiss tournament matches is that we have a dark cave here. As the tournament progresses, the flags do get harder and harder, and both players taking a pretty much simultaneous death here. And uh, Zarnax is actually going to elect to leave, where V Resner is going casting shield and going for broke. But anyway, getting back to the flags, um, you don't start with candle anymore. Uh, previously, uh, all the races you started with candle, and that is no longer the case here. You have to find it if you want to be able to see anything. Additionally, um, palaces, all the items in palaces previously were turned into keys, so you had a higher potential of getting through palaces. That is no longer the case. Uh, there will still be some keys in palaces, but it's more likely that there'll be like a pea bag or uh, something else along the lines. And finally, uh, you'll notice these enemies in these caves kind of seem pretty nasty. Uh, another flag that has been enabled is what we call Mix Small and Large Enemy, so that means any enemy can appear anywhere um, within uh, like sprite limits and like position limits and whatnot. So uh, what, what used to be like a very simple cave can turn into something very, very nasty, as you saw the invisible red dyras in Heart Container Cave prove. And uh, Zarnax is going to pick up an early raft here in um, Trophy Cave, and uh, beat Resner right behind him. So Resner was able to pick up the Heart Container in Heart Container Cave. Go figure. Thanks, Randomizer. And uh, yeah, so we've got a pretty even start here. And once again, the whole mix, large and small, doing work here. We got two red Dyras in this uh, grass tile encounter, so it's going to be good early experience, but. If you're not uh, up to snuff on your combat, you're going to get uh, waylaid in these uh, later tournament rounds. So Zarnax takes care of those red Dyras. Unfortunately, only 50 experience a pop. That's pretty low for Dyras. So, uh, probably a little bit disappointed at the numbers there, but he does a really good job of fighting them off. We've got another cave. Uh, Resner spots uh, either the right side of Fairy or Parappa Cave. And we have the town of Ruto as well, which will require the trophy for uh, the spell out of there. So uh, We immediately also see a hammer blocked cave there, and so that means there's at least one item in a cave that will require the hammer in the western continent. That may come into play later on, uh, depending on when and where, or if we even see the hammer. Both runners taking a pretty similar route here. Um, Zarnax was able to pick up the raft. I, I think Resner did grab the raft as well. I'm gonna more go ahead and say he did. I was uh, organizing things on my end a little bit. I don't see why he wouldn't have. And uh, yeah, these uh, these enemies giving both of these runners a little bit of a hard time. Resner's gonna head and go up and A. Again, probably to just go a different direction and to get his lives back. And uh, Zarnax is actually going to take a game over here. 
So, uh, kind of a brutal start, as, uh, it looks like the only escape from this little area might be that, uh, cave in the swamp there. Uh, Zardax is gonna go for round two in Heart Container Cave, which we know will yield a Heart Container. And, uh, looking like Reznor is gonna take a dip into this cave, which is either Fairy Cave or Parappa Cave. Won't be able to tell until we see some enemies. It is Parappa Cave, so it'll be nice and easy. Ah, uh, maybe not with a Red Dyra. So, uh, unfortunately, only one one red dire is not not the end of the world. Especially if you get him against that wall, you can kind of hit lock him, and uh, he'll be doing just fine. So, uh, Reznor is solving the puzzle of getting out of the start area earlier than Zardax here, so he's going to be enjoying just a small advantage for right now. And Zardax is going to pick up that heart container and up an A to restart at max lives. And uh, Reznor is going to find yet another cave in the swamp here. And it is going to be Jump Cave, so that's not going to be too useful as of now. And let's see how long it takes Zarnax to figure out uh, just how to get out of this little block here. One little stretch of forest tile on the east side there as Reznor comes across the town of Rauru. Oh, nope, there's no escape there. So, uh, Reznor's gonna be picking up the second free spell in the western continent here, where uh, Zarnax is finding every Daira on the planet. Um, so, once again, uh, Reznor coming into this tournament, uh, not necessarily a randomizer player, but a very skilled all keys runner. Uh, and the spell in Rauru is Reflect, so that's one required spell already down. A uh, very easy find. So uh, the likelihood of both Thunder and Reflect being readily available has increased significantly here. And uh, Zarnax is a very experienced randomizer player. Uh, I'm not actually not familiar with his vanilla game speedrun credentials if he has any at all, but that's just me not knowing Zarnax well enough. That doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't uh, have any credentials. And uh, Zarnax is definitely a fan of the more difficult flags. You know, some of those late night races that he uh, he participates in, you know, he'll suggest some really difficult flags. So uh, I feel like the further on this tournament goes, the more of a threat Zarnax becomes. So it should be a very interesting race here. Um, he is running into a little bit of early trouble, Zarnax, and uh, Reznor found Death Mountain but elected to immediately step out, but he did see the boulder. So that's uh, another item blocked by Hammer, so if we see the Hammer, um, there's two easily obtainable items. So hopefully, hopefully the hammer pops up soon, because it, it can be one of those things where do I, if you get the hammer, say like on Maze Island, way in the east, do you go back and try and uh, grab these items, or do you keep looking in the east? So we'll see, we'll see. Lot, lots of strategy comes into play here, as we see Palace 3 or 6, as well as Palace 5 in the western continent here. Both palaces, uh, definitely not ones you want to duck into early. And especially with the flag changes, um, ducking into palaces early is actually pretty discouraged um, due to the fact that um, there's no extra keys available. So if you don't have fairy or the magic key to go into a palace, your chances of running into a blocked door are pretty high, regardless of the palace you're going into. So we did see the raft tile on Reznor's side, as Zarnak is going to find the other end of Saria. Uh, Zarnax has not found Rauru yet. So I didn't actually mark reflect for Reznor, shame on me. And, um, yeah, item caves have been pretty scarce here. Um, Reznor's finding a lot of, a lot of pass-through caves. He found jump, both sides of jump caves. He found, um, fairy cave. Um, there is a hammer block there that might lead to more caves, but it's hard to tell from what we've been able to see here. And uh, Zarnax versus Dyra is round 45 here. I'm giving him the business for sure. And 
Professor's gonna find the uh, final town here, eventually. Which we know has to be, at this point, Nido. But, uh, unfortunately for Reznor, there's nothing he can really do in Nido outside of verify its location and move on. Uh, in order to get downstamp, he would need the jump or fairy spell. And if he wanted to collect the item, or sorry, the spell out of Nido, he would need the water of life. Um, and unfortunately none of that has surfaced so far. And uh, Reznor attempting to go through Fairy Cave here, he's met with um, uh, what appeared to be a Red Spear guy. I don't specifically remember what their official name is, as well as a Red Dyra, so that is a nasty cave there. Especially in the dark. And we've got Zarnax, he's going to be picking up the Reflect spell to pull even with Reznor here. And uh, here we go, Reznor's going to go ahead and head on east. Even though we've only seen, um, we've seen one hammer blocked cave and we've seen one item cave. I'm oh, no, sorry, two item caves. So there's a lot left to be found here in the west, but Reznor's gonna say, screw it, I'm going east. And he's gonna find a great palace very early on. He's also gonna pick up a 500 point pea bag, and that's gonna be great for some early levels. Meanwhile, Zarnax has arrived at Death Mountains, and he's going to be taking a cursory glance in to see if he can't pick up a quick, a quick hammer cave here and uh, maybe pull out a very useful item, but uh, we'll see. And we've got Reznor ducking into this forest tower. It's gonna net him a 1-up, so he'll be pretty happy about that. Uh, traversing the east without downstab or levels can be very, very dangerous, but uh, Reznor is definitely up to the task. And once again, uh, if I do miss tracking anything, feel free to call it out in chat, I won't get offended. Uh, I am more than likely to miss a lot of things as this race goes on. And uh, the cross for Reznor on the desert tile, perhaps not what he was looking for, but uh, an item nonetheless. And that is a pea bag cave that Reznor just backed out of there. He's gonna go ahead and turn around and go back in. He's probably worried about um, all the nasty stuff he can find in here. You know, floating eyeballs that you can't see, MOAs that you can't see. But um, there's definitely at least one MOA. And he does have the cross, so he can he can see the MOAs, technically. But uh, when everything's dark, they're definitely hard to see. And uh, this pea bag cave for Reznor. Gonna run into this little lizard dude. He's gonna get the flute, so the cross flute wombo combo for Reznor here. And uh, Zarnax is dutifully searching the west here, um, having no luck in finding any caves, much like uh, Reznor did. So I'm trying to figure out where these caves might even be. So there was a river surrounding the entire starting area, and I'm thinking you might need boots to get across that river to really pull out anything of use, or traversing through Fairy Cave will spit you out in that area. into Great Palace to up an A so he can restart with all of his lives. And uh, lo and behold, he has that flute, so uh, he will clear out this River Devil and it does actually lead to a road. Is it going to get him anywhere? This, uh, that remains to be seen. The River Devil likes to block roads that aren't exactly useful. And it did, does look like that uh, Red Lizalfos there is immune to Sword Slashes, so he's just going to have to power through him. And yes, it is going to lead to more things, as Zarnax has found Bagu, though we've seen both sides of Saria, so that doesn't necessarily help him all that much. And uh, Rezzer's got a town here in the east. It's going to be the town of Niburu, so he's going to pick up yet another free spell. And uh, if this is fairy, or even if it's jump, uh, Zarnax is going to have, I'm uh, sorry, Reznor's going to have a little bit of, of an advantage here. 
Uh, he's got a lot more exploration now. Now Zarnax gives up on the west as well, and he's gonna head on east. And so he's basically following in Reznor's footsteps. Just maybe three to four minutes behind. Remember the magic word in Nibiru, and that would be the spell spell. Taking out that blue Octorok, he's gonna just sneak him an attack level out of there. So he's headed to the northeast where we know Reznor found both the cross and the flute, and that flute is going to get him further south into this continent. And boom! Blue Azolfo says not today to Zarnax. He's Zarnax has been finding a lot of nasty encounters here. And uh, having a little bit more trouble than Reznor is with these encounters, as Reznor has found the town of New Casudo. And we need six magic containers for the old woman. Something to keep in mind as we continue throughout this seed. Uh, Reznor did pick up the spell spell, so he will be able to check the spell tower if he has enough magic to cast a spell. Which I don't think that we've actually seen the cost on spell yet, so it'll be interesting to see if he'll be able to cast it. But uh, we're running out of free spells for Reznor here. We've got this and Old Kasuda left before we need spell items. And we have the Sperry spell, which will unlock all of the dungeons for Reznor as he's now able to get through doors. And uh, Zarnax is uh, taking out his frustrations on this Blue Azolfos here and gets a hundred experience points for his trouble. That is a horrible roll for the Blue Azolfos considering how difficult they are. And uh, Zarnax... Not sure what happened there. Let's pull Rasner's audio. There, Zarnax is back. Then I'll unmute him. I'll see if I can't get a refresh on Zarnax's stream and get him synced up here. Looks like he's having a little bit of stream trouble. And, uh, we're getting a uh, dual Resner right now, so bear with me. Got a, uh, a there we go. Zarnax is back, chugging along, but he's back. And uh, Reznor has found Maze Island here. I'm not sure if Reznor was able to pick up any other items as I was fixing, trying to fix Zarnax's uh, stream here. But uh, Reznor's going to be looking for items on Maze Island here. As Zarnax is really not far. I guess he is a little bit uh, away from where Reznor was, but uh, Zarnax does have the cross. He's going to be picking up the uh, flute here as well. So I'll just go ahead and mark those, assuming uh, when his stream does catch up that he will have them. Man, it's looking like he's about a minute and a half behind just from a sync standpoint too, so he's definitely having some uh, network trouble there. But uh, we will uh, we'll come up with something. Maybe uh, once his internet calms down, we'll give him another refresh, and uh, we'll be back in sync here. But uh, meanwhile, Reznor... Digging through Maze Island here, finding a lot of mandatory encounters, which can be a real pain in the butt. And uh, Zarnax is back at start. I wonder if he game over before he got the flute or not. Kinda hard to tell. Reznor continuing through Maze Island here. Uh, Zarnax is uh, still 
thinking, you know, there's so much in the West that he hasn't seen. Maybe, maybe I just missed something and I can find it. We've got Palace 2 on Maze Island for Reznor here. But he's still got uh, a lot of items to find here. And uh, Zarnax knows Bagu, but that's not going to get him too much. Uh, we already know Saria is the town immediately next to start, so... Not sure if he remembers that. He got Fluth and up an eight. Thank you. And uh, Reznor's running into some unfriendly enemies, though. He's able to get past some of them. Challenge accepted, says Reznor, and man, he just hops on over, no problem. What is Zarnax doing? He got this spell already. Did he forget that he got the spell out of Saria? I'm assuming he did. Uh, Reznor taking Magic 4, trying to reduce the cost of Fairy, but it still costs 42. That's only one cast per uh, per life currently, and so that's a little bit unfortunate that the cost of Fairy is so high. Even with another Magic Jar, it would still be one cast per life. And uh, Reznor does find an item here. It is the item that's normally in the kid location. And it is going to be the medicine. So that'll get Reznor another uh, spell. He does have fairy. I didn't mark that. I'm done. So we've got one more item left on Maze Island, and Reznor's kind of running out of tile, so it's got to be around here somewhere looks to be behind one of those smaller blocks, you see. And so he will continue to dig for this item. I can't blame him. There's a lot left on the table that he needs. Uh, it's looking like boots are a definitely convenient item to have. We don't know if they're required quite yet, but they will certainly come in handy. Uh, we definitely have at least one hammer-blocked cave as well as the boulder on Death Mountain being right in the first screen as we have Reznor dipping into the first palace of the sea here, Palace 2. Uh, palace 2 is a relatively easy palace. Um, enemies aren't too difficult. Um, it's not a terribly long palace. It's not the shortest palace by any means. But um, One thing that Reznor could run into in here is a potential glove block. There is one room in Palace 2 that requires the glove to proceed through. And uh, if that room happens to be blocking the path to the item or the path to the boss, then uh, Reznor's going to have to dip back in here at some point. So uh, let's hope for Reznor's sake that isn't the case. But uh, he's willing to take that chance. He's already all the way out here on Maze Island, probably doesn't want to come back, so can't really blame him for going into Palace 2 here. Well, Zarnax is actually going to find Old Casuto. This is something that um, Reznor did not come across. And so uh, Zarnax going to war with that MOA, and he is successful. And we're going to see what the spell in Old Casuto is. It can give you the most powerful magic. Zarnax picking up Thunder. So he has both Reflect and Thunder, and we know the fairy spell to be in New Casuto. So this is a relatively open seed, despite having a pretty trolly overworld in the grand scheme of things. Uh, outside of, you know, maybe finding the glove, this is gonna be pretty quick. And Reznor is going to find Germafencer here, and uh, he's going to take an intentional death, I think. 99% sure that was intentional. So we can get, uh, get some magic back, get his life back, and not waste his time. And uh, our good buddy Helmet Head here, spawning with only half of his life, and Reznor's just stabbed him in the eyeball. 
I'm sure uh, Helmet Head has had better days. As uh, he sticks it out as long as he can, but Resner is just a little bit too strong. Gonna drop 300 experience. Resner's gonna place the gem for a whopping 24 experience. Uh, he's probably gonna go ahead and take a life four, I would assume. And uh, that is our first gem of the contest. At 24 minutes, Resner clears Palace 2 on Maze Island. And he is going to return into the palace looking for the item. And uh, Zarnax is either grinding or looking a little bit confused as to where he could potentially go here. And it looks like he might have been just been going for that attack 4 level. And uh, he will proceed back through that narrow desert and see what he can find. Meanwhile, Resner dealing with the... Uh... I forget what those guys are called. Doom Rattlers, right? And Zarnax is actually gonna up an A away from Old Kasudo and return to the west. And uh, continuously returning to the west like this can be pretty costly as Every time you come back and you want to go anywhere, you have to go through Parappa Pass or through Saria, and then even then it spits you out far away from the Wrath Tile. So uh, it can, it's it's quite a trek to get anywhere if you're going to up an A back to the start here. And Resner is going to find the item in Palace 2, so no glove block at all. For anything important at least. And let's see what he pulls out of here. It's going to be the hammer. That's actually a pretty decent pickup. As that's going to unlock not only the hammer blocked item that we saw earlier in the west, but also the boulder item we saw, or the boulder we saw. So, uh, Rezzer's got five entire experience to get here, and there it is. Boom, 70 from the blue Stalfos dripper. And he's going to go ahead and take life five, and he's going to try and find this last item on Maze Island before I assume pulling out the hammer item. And uh, Zarnax is dipping back into Death Mountain. He's seen enough. He might be thinking, hey, maybe I need to take Death Mountain to uh, progress to the caves I can't get to. It could be one of those seeds where the only way to get through to everything that's inaccessible in the west is through Death Mountain. And he might be right, we have not seen the other side of Death Mountain yet, so uh, this could be a good call from Zarnax, we'll see. The final Maze Island item is a 100 point P bag. Resner's gonna up an A and he'll be coming back armed with the hammer. And so we'll be uh, seeing a little bit more of the east, or the west here. Meanwhile, Zarnax digging through Death Mountain, looking for that hammer cave. No luck so far. And Zarnax actually does find the other side of Death Mountain, and it leads him nowhere. I'm sure that's got to be a bit of a disappointment for him. I'm sure it had to, he had it in the back of his mind that, hey, I need to find the other side of Death Mountain to proceed. But no. Completely denied. I do believe Resner is looking for those hammer blocks. Looks like he doesn't quite remember where... Oh no, he was looking for the road hammer block. I forgot about that one myself. Um, but no, looks like he's looking for that item cave first, but uh... I'm completely wrong. He's going to Spectacle Rock. Oh, Zarnax did find hammer cave here by the looks of it. So Spectacle Rock for Resner does get him a magic container. But uh, so it'll be interesting to see what Zarnax finds in uh Spectacle Rock here. I did not exactly see where in Death Mountain it was, so it'll be interesting to see. Um especially now that Resner has pulled the item out of Spectacle Rock. Uh if this ends up being something important, it could be a huge advantage for Zarnax, even though he has been a little bit behind in this scene. 
Uh, Reznor's gonna open up a lot of the overworld here relatively easily with this hammer. He's gonna find Magic Container Cave right off the bat. And that's gonna be a Heart Container in Magic Container Cave. And Zarnax goes through Hammer Cave to find a Magic Jar. It could play a factor, but definitely not the item he was looking for, for sure. Another heart container on the grass tile for Reznor. He's up to seven. And uh, so far, the uh, Western Continent here has been a bust. And we do have a, the Hammerblock Cave that Zarnax saw. So we'll get to see what's in there. It is Peabag Cave. And quite honestly, Zarnax looks a little bit befuddled right now, trying to figure out where he needs to go to get to anything. And I wonder if uh, he didn't see the River Devil in the east, and so he doesn't realize that there's a place he can go. Reznor picking up the trophy in Peabag Cave. Uh, so that could lead him to either jump, life, or fire. We know thunder is an old Casuto. So unless fire leads to something substantial, um, not really the greatest pick up there. But once again, Reznor having the huge exploration advantage in the east here, um, pulling off to a pretty significant lead. Um, really, the options for Zarnax, like, there's a lot left on the table for him to do, so he's going to have to come up with something that uh, not only Reznor hasn't done already, but Reznor maybe won't think to do. So. We're gonna need, I think Zarnax needs to take like a gamble, like maybe dive into five or something along the lines. Uh, Zarnax is taking Fairy Cave here to try and get to these uh, caves in the west here. And uh, he makes it down, but immediately gets bopped. So no luck there. And there is a red diver waiting for him. But he's able to plow through him. He's got a Garia too. Man, what a nasty cave. Mido is in the north. It's readily accessible through Parappa Cave. And uh, Resner, gonna see what this last palace is in the west over here. Uh, but really, the hammer didn't really get him anything worthwhile, surprisingly, because it did open up a lot. And it, this is going to be Palace 1 in the west, so Rest is going to go ahead and dive, because why not? Palace 1, very short, very easy to get the item out of, so um, certainly a great option to go into. Uh, Zarnax not having any luck with Fairy Cave by the looks of it. So looks like the only way to get to those caves is either find the boots or find the hammer. And uh, we know at least the hammer's in the east in two. So Zarnax has got a lot of exploring to do. Meanwhile, Reznor taking out the blue iron knuckle, but the blue iron knuckle went with him. So hopefully Reznor's able to, or sorry, uh, hopefully Zarnax is able to figure out what he's missing here. And meanwhile, Reznor making short work of Palace 1, trying to get experience along the way here. And Zarnax is still looking around in the west, trying to find some kind of notion as to what he can get to, and he's not really having any luck. And 
And there's Mido, if you were wondering, Dig Shake, it's right there. Reznor does find a uh, horse head here, so he'll be placing the second gem of the contest in relative short order. And there, Zarnax has found the River Devil block. And so he'll finally be able to make some progress in the east here. And uh, Reznor versus Horsehead. Reznor orders. And he will place the second gem of the contest, taking a two gem lead over Zarnax here. Horn required seed. I would have to say yes. I did. I cannot think of a possible way that these runners could have proceeded without grabbing the horn. And we've seen every potential item location outside of like something in a, a palace. If the boots are in a palace, then no, I guess horn was not required. But um, horn was definitely the more obvious way to proceed. Meanwhile, Zarnax, fighting the town of Naburu here, he's going to pick up the Spell Spell. And uh, Reznor's going to re-enter Palace 1 looking for the item. Still looking for that glove, or the boots, or the key, or the candle. Lots of things left on the table that would be relatively useful. Uh, Reznor probably not needing the candle, uh, being the experienced player that he is. But uh, it's always nice to be able to see. And obviously the glove would put him... Uh, a thunder spell away in old Casudo from being full dig shake. So, Reznor's in pretty good shape here, depending on where the glove happens to be. Even if this ends up being like the boots, he still will enjoy that exploration advantage for a lot longer than Zarnax might. So, things are heavily in Reznor's favor at the moment, but that doesn't mean that Zarnax can't come back. You have the item in Palace 1 is a pea bag. Dig shook. So ultimately, all the items in the West, I mean, aside from some hard containers and some magic containers, end up being a huge bust. Um, so if Zarnax ends up getting the hammer and decides, hey, yeah, I don't need to go back. I've already got, you know, mostly everything I need. If he ends up finding the glove, that... That's all of this time Reznor has spent in the West looking at items. You know, that's time Zarnax can make up. But uh, Reznor is going to take a pit stop into Mido. He not only has the Water of Life, but he also has the Fairy spell, so he'll pick up both Downstab and an additional spell here. And uh, Zarnax getting the spell out of New Kasuto, which we know to be Fairy. And he also has a spell, that did not work. Reznor does have trophy, thank you. So it might be time to talk about what spots could the glove possibly be left in. Uh, we have one pea bag cave left in the east that we have not seen. We have not seen the water tile, obviously, as we do not have boots. Uh, we've seen both items in Maze Island, the items out of 1 and 2. We have not seen the items out of 3, 4, 5, or 6. And I do believe that's all. And we have not seen the Old Lady Jar item yet. Zarnax discovering Maze Island here, so he's probably going to start the Maze Island runaround, and he'll be picking up um, the Water of Life, as well as maybe the Hammer out of two. I did not see what spell Reznor got. If somebody wants to inform me what that was, I was zoning out a little bit there. I'll see it in a second here, as Rest is going to cash in his trophy as well. A jump in Mido, thank you. This 
It's magic to restore your life. So fire, by process of elimination, has to be in Darunia. Alright, so, uh, now that Zarnax seems to have stabilized here, he is about a minute behind on my stream. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get a refresh and try and get him up to date here. So bear with me for a second. I looked back just in time to see Reznor pick up the magic key out of Medicine Cave. I did not specifically see where Medicine Key was. Uh, sorry, Medicine Cave was, but uh, that's certainly a fantastic pickup for Reznor. And so he's going to be happy with that find. That's going to make Clearing Palaces a breeze. So the medicine cave was hammer blocked by start, I believe, is what the chat is telling me. So Zarnax finding Palace 2. He's going to continue looking for items on Maze Island. Resner, meanwhile. Gonna be uh, looking at these palaces, seeing what he can find here. This is Palace 5, and he's going in. 445, doesn't have a care in the world. He's got that magic key. What's gonna stop him? Well, certainly uh, not the layout of Palace 5, as Guma is one room in. Longest palace, my butt, as uh, Resner. Making short work of Guma. Attack four, no problem. Look at him go, dude. Does take a hit there, but he has shield on. Doesn't even do two bars of damage, and boom. Guma's down in no time flat. And Resner's gonna be clear in palace five. And probably the fastest I've ever seen a Palace 5 be cleared in a Zelda 2 randomizer. And he says, screw looking for the item in 5. When the Palace is done that fast, I'll go elsewhere. And I can't blame him. So Reznor has not checked that little desert area to the south yet, and we know from Zarnax's side that that does lead to Old Kasudo, which does lead to Thunder. So Reznor's going to be looking for not only the glove here, but also Old Kasudo, and he might even think he needs the kid at this point. So Zarnax at least has an advantage there, that he already has Thunder and he knows that uh, he doesn't really have to dig for any more spells. But uh, Resner has a pretty significant lead. He's up three gems now. And uh, making short work of just about everything he's come across. Life and jump for V. Resner. Thank you. I marked them on the tracker, but not the... Uh, not the actual... The middle tracker, not the uh, individual tracker. And the Resner stream has locked up for me. So we will give audio back to Zarnax here as I try and get this one figured out.
So our next finding the item in two, which we know to be the hammer. So that will probably prompt him to do all the digging in the west that uh, Zarnax did, which ultimately did not lead to any significant finds outside of the magic key. Can't forget that one. And uh, let's see what I can do about Lee Reznor here. So bear with me for just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and mark the hammer because he's going to pick it up eventually. And uh, let's see what I can do. looking like Reznor's stream is currently down, so he'll be back hopefully soon. Hopefully there wasn't any kind of like a computer crash or something like that. So Zarnax getting the item out of two, we know it's the hammer and we know he'll be able to find Helmet head without too much problem. No glove blocks here. Oh, here he comes. We're back. And he's at Carrick. And Carrick's down. Wow. <laughs> what a palace. You should have seen how, uh, how he handled that one. It was amazing. Couldn't tell you what happened at all, but Karak down, Palace 4 down for Reznor. He's got four gems placed. Only two left to go. But he has not found that pesky glove as far as I know. So it'll be interesting to see if he ducks back into 4 to try and find the item. That yeah, looks like uh, Reznor's internet completely died, but uh, he's, uh, he's back. And it's looking like he is ducking back into 4 to try and find the item. We are on a, an epic hunt for the glove here. I'm going to assume Karak was to the... Excuse me, to the right there. And uh, here we have a dead end. And some red iron knuckle. And a blue iron knuckle. It's really interesting to see the level discrepancy between Zarnax and Reznor because Zarnax is at 445 having zero gems placed, where Reznor is at 456 and he has four gems placed. So Zarnax is going to enjoy an experience advantage should this seed somehow run long. But uh, Reznor proving very handily that he doesn't really need the levels to progress with any, any amount of speed here, so. Making short work of all these difficult palaces. And Zarnax is actually going to turn around and get that last uh, 150 experience. But th thankfully, this tripper here has 70 point blue Stalfos, so it shouldn't take too, too long for him to get that experience. I jinxed him. It's over. It's gonna be here all day. Taking a death on the blue iron knuckle and losing the experience at the same time. And we do have the item room in four for Reznor. One of the few remaining potential places for the glove, but it is the final heart container. And uh, by my count, he has shield. He has every heart container. What was the. And he has the cross. I believe that makes him full Joshi D. Zarnax, placing his first gem of the contest, Palace 2. No candle. Oh, he got me. No candle. I thought it was cross, not candle. So 
So the story of this seed, where is this freaking glove? Reznor is back in New Casuto, but he only has five jars and the old lady wants six. And uh, Zarnax also only has five jars, but um, we know Spectacle Rock has the additional jar and there's two more we don't know about. So it's possible that you need to pull both I items off of Death Mountain, being both of them being magic jars, in order to get the glove from the old lady. Wouldn't that be something else? And Zarnax is trying to get through Maze Island without downstab here, and he's running into a little bit of trouble. Look at that Valley of Death! Or lack thereof. That is the most open Valley of Death I think I've ever seen. Zarnax finding the pea bag. And uh, he's gonna go ahead and peace out and see what this hammer's gonna get him. He'll be happy to find the magic key. I'm not sure he'll be happy to find much else here. Valley of mild discomfort. Yes, accurate. Alright, Zardax, using that hammer, gonna pick himself up the magic key, assuming uh, this cave stops giving him the business here. And uh, Resner's just looking around the east here, trying to find perhaps the final final peabag cave, as well as Old Gasudo. Uh, there's a cave over there way to the southwest that looks like it either might be boot blocked or might require some other magic cave in order to get there. So, like, you might need to get the boots from somewhere to get to the glove as well. We don't, it's hard to tell at this point. But, uh, Rest is gonna start taking caves, see where they spit him out, and, uh, he might end up somewhere interesting, you never know. Resner is back where he started, so that cave didn't really get him anywhere, unfortunately. And Zarnax is headed west. He's gonna pick himself up a bunch of heart containers and uh, a bunch of junk. Just gonna recheck how many jar. No, he's just gonna. He's gonna take a heal. Did he not cast spell before? He must not have. Have if he's coming down here. Maybe he didn't have enough uh, enough magic to cast spell last time. I thought he did, but maybe I was wrong. Spell Tower it is, and it is the boots! I was indeed wrong. He did not have enough to cast last time. And so the boots are gonna open up a lot of exploration. That little area in the southwest, the water tile, a lot of options just opened up for Reznor here. And not only that, but whenever he does up an A, he can just walk to the north instead of having to go through uh, Parappa Cave every single time. So that's gonna be a nice little advantage. continue to look through caves here as Zarnax picks up both Downstab as well as the spell in Nita, which we know to be Jump. I'm surprised Zarnax is actually picking up spells here, but uh, he gets Jump nonetheless. And 
Dresner does find a cave to that little southwest area, but uh, there's only one cave over here. And I think that has to be the final P-Bag cave, and it is. So a magic cave to get to this little southwest area to get to the final P-Bag cave, and let's see what it holds. It could be a magic container, it could be the glove, it could be the candle, it could be the kid, it could be a pee bag. It is the glove, the magic cave to get to the glove. And that is going to put Reznor Thunder away from full dig shake. He's going to be in great shape here. As Zarnax finds the item, I believe... I'm actually not sure what palace he's even in. Is this one? I think so. This is five. So five not only has an immediate item to the left, but Goomba immediately to the right. What a palace, dude. So the only thing stopping Reznor now is finding uh, Old Kasudo, which we know to be just south of the Raft Tile. Uh, through the desert. He might not even have to go through the desert anymore now that he has the boots. So Reznor in really good shape. And uh, Zarnax. Looks like, uh, I'm not too sure if he knows what he's looking for right now, but, uh, there we go. He's going to the raft tile. He's headed back to the east after the disappointing western finds. Resonator's going to pick up the water tile item here. It is a magic jar, so any chance Zarnax had of having an advantage jar-wise has been, uh, taken away. And uh, Reznor just a little bit more east and he's going to have Old Kasudo and he's going to be picking up Thunder here. There he goes. I can give you most powerful magic. That will put Reznor at full dig shake. He has everything he needs to complete the game. And uh, only has two palaces left to go, so... Zarnax is going to need a miracle and a half at this point. Reznor's gonna dip into Darunia here, and he's gonna pick up Upstab. So, uh, literally nothing's gonna stop him in uh, Great Palace here. If he did, if we did happen across the one possible Upstab block in Great Palace, no longer an issue. Valley of Mild Irritation, and he's probably going to clear out this palace here, which has to be three or six at this point. Zarnax taking out that River Devil. And we'll continue looking around the east here. One of every iron knuckle here in this room. As this is Palace 6 for Reznor. See so as he's met with a drop here. 
he's got two keys. He's got the magic key. He's got fairy. He's got thunder. And fairy is cast. He's on a mad hunt for Barba here. Well, it's not Barba, but it is Rebanac. The first Rebo we've seen. Um, with attack four, Rebo does take a couple of stabs to get the horse here, but uh, a couple of stabs is what Resident is really good at here. As he's making short work of this uh, this Rebo, and man, he's down already. Zarnax finding old Kasuto here. He's gonna pick up the old lady item, which uh, we have not actually seen this yet. So this it might be the kid. It could be a magic jar. It could be a pee bag. It's the candle, of course. The one item I don't call out. Thanks, game. And uh, Resner found the item room in six and immediately turned around. He does not need anything, so uh, I'm not going to waste the time on the mini boss. But Zarnax does also have the spell, 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 spell. So he'll be able to check what's in the spell tower, but if he remembers that he needs magic in order to cast it. So we found everything but the kid. Poor kid's gonna remain undiscovered in this one, I think. As uh, Resner finds the Riku player room, there's a one-up chilling down there for him, but he doesn't care. Zarnax erecting the spell tower and we'll net him the boots here and he's gonna elect to up an A interesting choice I wonder if he wanted to go back to Raftile specifically to be able to explore the east here or if he wanted to make sure he got everything in the west I'm not sure Resner's gonna jump on down into the lava. So he has enough magic to cast fairy to get through the fairy room. As he continues his hunt for Barba and uh, Zarnax. You've been here, buddy. I think. He definitely hammered his way down here. He did not go into this cave. He must have walked right past it. Interesting. He's going to pick up another heart container. So he's got seven. And oh no. Rezzer's actually going to up an A after unfortunately getting bopped into the lava again. But uh... A little bit of a time loss, but really not the end of the world. Uh, we know that he's enjoying a pretty significant advantage here. As Zarnax is going to clear out the pea bag cave, which is the trophy. And we know the trophy in Ruto leads to life. Resner continues exploring Palace 16. Gonna immediately find an elevator, so that's pretty convenient. And there's Barba for Resner, so to see what we see here. He's got Reflect. He's got Jump. He's got Shield. And not getting the Jackhammer. He stabs him 500 billion times and doesn't take a single point of damage off of him here, so uh, it's 
Gonna have his work cut out for him a little bit, but it shouldn't be in any danger. Just gonna take a little while. And the uh, Spectacle Rock for Zarnax is going to net him another magic container. He's up to seven now. And he's already pulled the item on a hammer cave, so he's got nothing left to do in Death Mountain. And uh, Reznor puts the finishing touches on Barba here. He's going to be placing his fifth gem. And Zarnax is ducking into Palace 6, looking for the glove. No, sorry, this is Palace 3. They look very, they're the same color, but there's different blocks. Resner's headed to the same place here. And uh, Zarnax is immediately met with the glove block, so he immediately knows, hey, the glove's not in three. I'm trying to think what locations could Zarnax possibly have left. He has the boots, so I don't think he's checked the water tile yet, so that's a possibility for Zarnax. Um, he knows that he has one pea bag cave in the east as well. Um, he must be missing a cave over here in the west, otherwise he wouldn't be hunting so hard for, uh, for things. Or maybe he's just looking for palaces and he finds palace one. But uh, we know the item in Palace 1, I believe, to be a tea bag, if I recall correctly. So unfortunately, Zarnax... Getting juked by the glove here. Though I do have to say, Reznor has played this seed significantly well. Um, all of the issues Arnax has run into, uh, Reznor has run into as well. It's just that Reznor just uh, barreled through everything without a care in the world. And uh, has made short work of just about every issue he's come across and has played really great, quite frankly. Zarnax is going to find a horse head here. Uh, Reznor finds the item room in three. But well, that's not what he's looking for. He's looking for Rebenak. As uh, Zarnax makes a very short work of horse head, and he will be completing his second palace of the run. And Reznor is on a hunt for a horse man. Not the same horseman that uh, Zarnax just killed, of course. Zarnax re-entering Palace 1 here. He's looking for that glove. And unfortunately for him, we know that the glove is not there. And we do have Rebenak for Reznor, the final palace to be cleared for him. Looks like uh, Reznor's final level is looking probably to be 5-6-6 here for a great palace, so... Might be a little bit of a challenge, but uh, especially now that we have mixed large and small enemies, the uh, Great Palace difficulty increases rather significantly. So it will be interesting to see how Reznor fares at uh, relatively low levels, but uh... If, uh, if his gameplay so far is any indicator, I think he'll be just fine. So the final gem placed for Reznor here, he's going to be moving on to Great Palace. And Sarnax continues to dig through Palace 1 here, trying to find the item. And uh, Great Palace right here in the swamp. As Dig Shake intended, of course. Reznor will enter at 109 
46-ish. As Zonax enters the item room for Palace 1 here. And it is a pea bag. He's gonna up a in disgust and uh, move on to see what else he can find. And we've got a waffle room for Resner. Nice red Faka there to say hello, but he's just gonna jump right on past him. And uh, a bot in the middle. No problem there. And boom, dead end. Rise is gonna up an A and try the other side. Meanwhile, Zarnax using those boots to his advantage. He's gonna check the water tile here. And he's, that's gonna net him another magic container, I believe. That'll be his final one. So he's at eight magic containers and seven heart containers. And I don't know if that area with the glove is accessible with the boots. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure you have to take a cave to get there. That red fox is giving rest in the business right now. Zarnax enters the Valley of Mild Irritation and finds Palace 6. So he's gonna try his luck for the glove inside of Palace 6 here. Another bot in the middle for Resner, so... Waffle rooms... so far so good, really. I haven't had too many issues. Yep, the path Resner is on, there has not been a branch yet, I do not believe. Uh, there was a branch early on, but that immediately dead-ended to the right. So uh, Resner's gonna have to deal with a little bit of lag here, thanks to all the projectiles on the screen, but no problem. As uh, he does find the Eon drop, and uh, he's dropped through the hole, that's for sure. And by the looks of it, he's just gonna... He's either gonna go up and around, or he's gonna go down the hole. And he's gonna go up and around. Got some angry bird knights chasing him though, as uh, Zarnax is in the first Rebo mini boss. And oh, it is a dead end, so... All of that work he put in to get around those blue Fakas is just uh, for naught here, as he's just gonna go down the Eon drop anyway. And another left. We do find the Jackamus room here, as Zarnax finds the item room in 6. Uh, we know Reznor found the item room in 6 and backed away as he was he did not need anything, so it'll be interesting to see what we find here. Um, it's likely either the kid or a key bag at this point. And uh, Reznor does find another drop and elects to back away and go to the left. Zarnax does find the kid in Palace 6, but uh, definitely not what he was looking for as uh, he doesn't really have any spells left. And uh, Resner finds a drop room going left, so that drop he found is mandatory. Oh, JK, he's gonna go left instead. I forgot, that's my fault. Left at the Jackamus room, instead of taking the second drop, and it's gonna be a one-up. Now it's forced. So Zarnax has dug Palace 3, dug Palace 6. Uh, looked at the water tile. He's done just about everything he possibly can to find this glove and has not had any luck. And slowly but surely, he's going to find the magic cave that will take him to the pea bag cave that will finally net him the glove. Mm -hmm. 
Reznor picking up the fabled Deep Room Jar. And another one. Double the jars, double the fun. Continues moving right, looking for Thunderbird. I'm actually, now that uh, Reznor is actually online, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to his audio. So Reznor does check up, does find that it does lead to the left, so he'll go ahead and try the fun room to the right. Uh, we've seen some interesting fun rooms with these flags so far. Uh, but this one doesn't look too, too difficult, as he's got an orange Faka, which dies in one hit, and a bot in some bubbles. Not the end of the world. Could certainly be a lot more fun than that, if it wants to be. And here we are, Thunderbird on the side of Reznor here. And he's got plenty of magic for him, thanks to all the jars he found. So, expect this to be a relatively simple fight for him. Three hits right out of the gate as he starts the pendulum. He's able to recover there and get two hits in. Eh, only one on that pass. That's okay. Not taking damage. As long as you're not taking damage, you're good to go. He makes he makes three hits look so easy. Has Zarnax narrowed the the search for glove down to pee bag cave? I think he's down to pee bag cave or four. I'm not sure he's checked palace four yet. As uh, that that is the palace he just came across, I believe. And we have Dark Link for Reznor here. So, uh, Thunderbird immediately followed by Dark Link. Has been a theme of this tournament, and it will continue to be. As uh, Reznor pretty much destroying this seed, doing a really good job of not getting caught up in all of the BS that this seed had to offer. And uh, really taking it to Zarnax here. As. Reznor's going to finish with a time of 118.04. Congratulations to Reznor. That was... If anybody else in this tournament watched this race, that was a scary run right there. Very well played. Very well executed. And uh, if, if Reznor's not one of your favorites to win this tournament after that display, I don't know what you were watching. So Zarnax is plowing through Palace 4 here. He's got Palace 4, and I believe the only other spot he hasn't found is where the glove actually is, unfortunately for him. So uh, let's see if Zarnax wants an interview. I know he has declined in the past, so it would not be surprising if he's all like, nah. But uh, we'll see. As uh, Zarnax is going to continue slugging along here. He does have the magic key and reflect, so he will be able to clear this palace, as 4 does not have any sort of glove block. He does find Karak, so uh, why not take him out? Darnax taking out Karak. Uh, 
Professor did decline the interview. So, Zarnax placing his third gem. He makes short work of Karak here. He's probably going to be turning around and heading back into Palace 4 to find the item. And uh, unfortunately for Zarnax, we know that to be, I believe, a heart container. So uh, he's literally going to find every possible location except for the one he needs. Zarnax does find the item room. And it is the heart container. Only one place remains, and it's a pea bag cave in the east, and Zarnax trudges on. And uh, once again, a friendly reminder that these races at this point are a single elimination. So while Reznor will be moving on to face the winner of Yunos and Buzz Thunder, unfortunately for Zarnax, this will be his uh, final match of the tournament here. As uh, all of the matches in the remainder of the tournament, with the exception of, I believe, I originally heard only the finals, but then I heard top four, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, which of the matches will be best of three or not, but I do believe it's only the finals. It is top four, okay, eating my words. Zarnax is looking long and hard for this cave. I don't even remember which one was the right one at this point, but uh, he's going to turn around, don't drown, and he's going to continue on looking for this cave here. I, I want to say it was one of the ones near the middle that actually ended up leading to the, to the glow. Mad hunt for the glove continues for Zarnax here. As we know, it is a magic cave that spits out into an isolated area where only the pea bag cave is and the magic cave, of course. And uh, he has yet to come across the proper cave for it. He has eliminated every other option except that option. He's looking for it. Well, in that cave, uh, Ryan is saying it is one of those caves to the northeast. But he 
backed up for some reason. So unfortunately, the hunt continues. Quite possibly one of the more trolley locations we've seen for the glove. You know, if it's in Palace 4, it's in Palace 5, that's one thing. Almost expected at this point, for what when it's isolated off in its own special little area and it takes a cave to get there and you're not really expecting that, it's definitely a uh, tough call to find. Let's take a look at the, uh, the brackets here, the bracket predictions. Is there a way to see how many people predicted which match? I think there is. Match detail. Predictors consider these players equally matched. I was curious to see how many people voted for Resna and how many people voted for Sartmax. Could do it manually, but that takes effort and I don't want to do that. So he sees the area he needs to go to. He sees the fact that there's a cave there. Now he's just got to find the cave. Keep yourself alive, just uh, thunder before you get hit. Easy every time. Uh, almost. And there it is, he has chosen the correct cave. And uh, this cave will net him the glove. All of his troubles will finally be over. And he has the glove. Zarnax is full dig trick. So he'll be able to make short work of the remaining palaces. And uh, we know that Palace 5 was very, very short. And especially the item room was apparently right there as well. So might be one of the quickest fives that we've seen. Whereas uh, I believe 3 and 6 were a little more involved. So probably got 
maybe about 15 to 20 minutes left for Zarnax to uh, clear out these remaining palaces. And then, of course, uh, Great Palace. But uh, I need to step away for just a moment here, but enjoy Zarnax throttling the rest of this seed to the best of his ability now that he has the glove. Shaking his fist, his gloved fist, at Zelda 2 Randomizer and Dig Shake. I will be uh, back in just a little bit here. Thank you. 
All right, back in time, just see Zarnax take a lava bath. Pretty good attempt, though. Kind of hard to get back over to the platform when you're on the left there. And uh, getting a lot of hits in. Uh, Barba on this seed definitely rolled a high health. Level. And Zarnax is letting him know how he feels. Down goes Barbara. Palace 6 down for Zarnax, 2 left to go, Palace 3 and Palace 5. And he's just gonna immediately up an A, he doesn't care about the levels, he's gonna go to 3 and 5, which are both in the west. has already been in Palace 5, so... He has pre-existing knowledge that going left early did knock the item room relatively quickly, but I'm sure he'll be equally surprised that going right will immediately get him to Guma. This is probably the most concise Palace 5 ever to be conceived in his old 2 randomizer. So yes, for those unfamiliar with this stage of the tournament, uh, in these four Swiss play-in rounds that we had to determine who would make the actual elimination bracket, uh, the flags were geared toward a more uh, newer player-friendly seating, whereas as the tournament progresses to the bracket stage and further along, the flags get more and more difficult, and ta-da, Guma! Zarnax zero. But uh, Zarnax fighting Guma straight up like a man. No shield, no nothing. We're gonna we're going in. We're gonna downstab him right in the chest. And we're just gonna we're gonna kick his butt. Halfway there. Oh, Guma wins again. That's okay. Zarnax gonna fight him like a man. Oh. Well. Nothing wrong with casting shield. Guma still, uh, still giving him business a little bit here. And uh, that is actually going to be a game over for Zarnax. However, will he walk all the way back to Guma through all the horrors that is Palace 5? think you're close to it then it clips you and you get tossed all over the place. It can be a real pain. Nice. Getting in them downstairs. Let them know. Oh. There we go. Guma down for Zarnax. He'll be placing his fifth gem.
does reflect what Goomba's mace. I actually have no idea. And we've got a uh, 567 on levels for Zarnax here as he enters his final palace, which is Palace 3. I do recall it is to the north a little bit. Oh no, he's in the north. Hmm. Don't exactly recall where it was. It's, it's around here somewhere. difference in the randomizer between strong and weak encounters. I think strong encounters are guaranteed to have some sort of quote-unquote annoying enemy, be it like rocks flying through the sky or bubbles or fish or birds. I think that's a guarantee. Whereas uh, the uh, weaker quote-unquote encounters aren't guaranteed to have that, but they can. Here we are. Palace 3 for Zarnax. His uh, final palace. He'll be uh, moving on through here. Zarnax did enter Palace 3 before, uh, looking for the glove, but I get this room and was glove blocked, so, uh, he'll be happy to make his way through here now. does find the item room and does turn around, so he might might be curious enough just to see what it is at this point. Because why not? I do believe it has to be a pee bag. He's got everything. Yeah. Gonna zap it. Boom! We want some fried peas? He can say he 100% of this seed now. He's seen every item room, every potential item location. Didn't collect every item, but he saw them. So a true 100% run from Zarnax. In terms of items, at least. He's not seen every palace room. That would be truly crazy. Here we are, we are on Ribanac. And uh, no downstab for Zarnax today. He's going to stab him right in the eyeball. Maybe he never learned how to press down. Oh, oh there he goes. He gets the super jump off the downstab and immediately uh, gets a nice sword beam to the shin there.
one more hit on Mr. Rebo here, and he will go down to the tune of 150 experience points. And Zardax will be placing his final gem of the contest into the Palace 3 altar. And he will make his way over to the Great Palace. But not before he lags out in this encounter that he just decides to ferry over, because... Why not? He actually elects not to take the attack level there. And we'll just up an A, so he's gonna do this at 5, 6, 7. I wonder if that was an accident. But, uh, I don't know. He seems like he's having fun with it, so maybe he just wants to challenge himself. The old 5, 6, 7 Great Palace. Here we go. goes right to the fun room. Get some nice, uh, nice waffles here. Not electing to jump over it like Reznor did. He's gonna take out every enemy in his path. Unfortunately for Zarnex, we know the next room to be a dead end. The up and A comes in, the door opens once again, and we re-enter Great Palace. Some nice sword swings to the music there. I'm always a fan of that whenever anybody does that. Got all kinds of sword beams flying everywhere. And uh, they're gonna do do a number on Zarnax, but he's gonna get through alive. Another waffle room for Zarnax here. Stab that orange Faka right in the gut. Got a nice bot in the middle here. Are these called red ropes? I don't actually know if those have a special name or if they're just fire breathing ropes or red ropes. Or... I'm sure somebody knows. Somebody that's not me. We got the blue Faka special room as uh, Zarnax is going to take a death here. Not one, not two, but three blue Fakas, giving you a taste of what mixed large and small enemies can really do in this, these seeds. Uh, it's not going to be the end of the world in this room, because two of them are isolated on the bottom, but imagine those just like up in your face, kicking your butt. And that's a definite potential, uh, potential sight you'll be seeing in some of these future races. These rooms can be really, really nasty. As a Zarnax does jump over the Eon Drop, clears the blue Fakas, and uh, realizes that you always take the Eon Drop. Come on, man. Come on. Jackamus room here. I do believe the correct way was down and to the right and taking that drop. If I'm not mistaken. And he is... he thought about turning around, but he's just gonna go for it. And I do believe this ends up being the correct call as well, so... So far so good for Zarnax in terms of passing through uh, Great Palace here. He 
sees a fun room, he decides, I don't want to have fun today. Time to go up the, the elevator and see what we got. But that does lead to the left, so Zarnax is going to try his luck in the fun room. I think this one had an orange faka and some bubbles. They're not bubbles, like those bubbles, not enemy bubbles. Oh, getting the, uh, the knockback shield glitch there for a moment as the uh, orange faka kind of glitched into the floor. But uh, all's well that ends well. Thunderbird, and we know that Dark Link is in the next room, so Zarnax, a couple minutes away from wrapping up this seed here. He also gets the triple hits in on Thunderbird. Man, I got some work to do. Thunderbird is at half health, he's angry, he's spitting fireballs like a madman, but Zarnax don't care. Two health bars remain. Now he's down to one. Pendulum in full effect here. And boom, three hits, and Zarnax has cleared Thunderbird. One final screen transition for Zarnax in this tournament will take him to Dark Link, and it will be interesting to see how Zarnax elects to fight this. He's going for it. One hit to the good. Oh, two hits to the good. Making it look easy. Three. Oh, he takes a hit. Four hits. Oh, it's a close one, folks. Five. Only three hits remain. The stare down. The epic sword duel and oh, Zarnax. Zarnax losing the epic sword duel. That's okay, he's got shield this time. Tell you what, fighting Dark Link straight up like that and hitting him that often? Not easy. He's making it look easy. One hit left. Dark Link's making him work for it. And there it is. Sarnak's official final SRL time, 1 hour, 55 minutes, and 15 seconds. Congratulations, Sarnak. And a well-played tournament, sir. Just uh, a tough, tough seed when the glove is so sequestered from everything else. Let's see if he's interested in an interview. He does say sure, so let me jump into Discord here. And, uh... Need his audio so that we don't get the double whammy.
And we do have Zarnax. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm done. You are indeed. Unfortunately, that glove location uh, gave you the full runaround. She did. I believe you ended up checking every single possible location except for where it was. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, I mean, I think I figured um, I, my start was really, really rough. Um, and V Resner is a really good vanilla player, so I figured I was behind right off the right off the bat. It was definitely a rough overworld. There were a lot of like uh, segregated parts, and then uh, what happened was you looked around the west trying because there was like a whole bunch of stuff in the west that was inaccessible due to either hammer yeah. block or boot block, and you spent a lot of time looking for it. Where Resner was like, "Screw it, I'm going east," like really early, and so that right. ended up putting him ahead of you. Yeah. Well, there was that. There, I mean, there's also just the fact that, like, I, uh, the West did not have much experience, um, and I was walking around with low levels for quite a while, uh, and dying a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely rough, um, and all of the uh, required spells were pretty much readily available. You got Reflect and Thunder relatively early, but unfortunately for Zelda Two Randomizer, it always seems to be something, and this time it was the glove. Yeah. So, what's next on the plate for Zarnax 42 now that uh, the Zelda 2 randomizer tournament run has concluded here? Well, the uh, Dragon Warrior randomizer tournament just started this week. Uh, won my first match last night, so I'm moving on in that. Congratulations, sir. Thanks. And then, um, I think two and a half, about two weeks from now, the uh, Final Fantasy Randomizer tournament is getting started. So those are uh, pretty much all on my plate right now. I know there's a Z1 Randomizer tournament talked being talked about. Don't know what's going on with that yet. So you, you're very clearly an avid randomizer player. Um, so what is it that really draws you to playing all these different randomizers? Were, were all of these games you played as a kid, or it's just the idea of having a new experience every time what really gets you? Yeah, these, all, these were all games I played as a kid. Um, and, and it's really, yeah, that's... I I picked up speedrunning a few years ago at Ground Zelda for a couple of years and, and got, like, my PBs. It's pretty good, but it's not like I could grind 20,000 attempts and be a couple minutes off the elite time still. I'm just, it's not not my natural skill. Um, and, but I mean, I have some skill in it. And, but yeah, the grind um, just got, it didn't work for me. It got a little dull. Um, I mean, every once in a while I think about going back to get a better time in some games that I've run. But it's, I just have so much more fun playing something where it's fresh every time. Yeah, I can't blame you. You know, uh, once you do hit that grind point and you're playing the game over and over again and not, not really seeing a whole lot of progress, it's hard to uh, really want to keep doing it. So uh, I, randomizers have kind of, I guess, breathed a, I guess, refreshing breath of air into speedrunning. Yeah. Um,. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I know there are some people who, like, just can't stand them. Um, and, like, are especially, not salty, but they kind of poke fun at people who play random, like, especially, like, people who used to run a lot and, like, do really well and have kind of fallen off because they've gotten into randomizers. Like, give them a little ribbing every once in a while, like, come back to your actual speed game. Yeah, I mean... You gotta do what you have fun with, though. At the end of the, exactly. end of the day. Exactly. Yeah, I think... I don't think I've really done anything but randomizers in over a year. <laughs> so, what's your favorite randomizer? What's that? What's your favorite rando to play? Right now, it's this one. Uh, I'm really actually looking forward... Um, like the last few weeks, um, 
every race we've had, people have wanted to do tourney flags. I'm really looking forward to when we got some people who are up to change it up a bit. Um, I'm a big proponent of just like max random. Yeah, I pointed out early on that uh, usually those late night races, you get your hands on those flags and they can be anything and everything. So <laughs> that was would have been inter interesting to see had you continued to progress as the flags got harder and harder. You definitely have uh, probably more experience than most people in those more difficult flags. Maybe. I mean, I really think the harder these fl the flags get um, when they're seven in, or like when they're always six gems, um, I think the harder the flags get, the more they favor vanilla players. I um, can see that, yeah. And um, I, I really like it when you've got like one or two hearts or you only have one or two gems and you need to figure out where is the most efficient place to place them. Like, how are you going to get your level, the levels that you want if you can only get the gem experience from a couple gems? Uh, um, I really like those puzzles. Um, I mean, the the long hard seeds are fun too, but they're definitely um, catered to different skill sets. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Um... Yeah, it's those those uh, short races can be uh, really interesting. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, that'll probably about wrap it up for us. Um, did you get a prediction bracket in there, Zarnax? I did. How how you feeling about uh? Let's see, let's see who you picked here. Pretty sure I didn't. Yo, so. you picked me. What a oh, fool. Yeah. What a fool! <laughs> How do you feel about Nirm winning the entire tournament? I think it's gonna happen. You crazy guy. <laughs> I, don't know, I, did, I didn't want to pick Big Shake or Yunos because that would be no fun. That's what everybody picks. I see. Gotta go against the grain. Yeah, and I... And I I mean, I really think if anybody has a chance to beat them, um, like, I mean, you've been knocking it out in some of the late night races. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see. Uh, like, watching Reznor play this seed uh, today, I think, really put a lot of people on alert because he, like, yeah. he killed it. Like, absolutely killed yeah. it. Yeah, I figured. We, we did a couple races yesterday, actually, and he was crushing me then, too. I was I was really hoping for a seed that um, that I could get a little bit lucky and where comp work like early game combat wouldn't be a huge factor, but it was. And I knew about 20 minutes into the seed that I had to gamble, or else I would had no chance at all. And you you definitely took some gambles, especially like uh, looking in through three and six for the glove, because those are definitely potential uh, you know high risk high reward plays, but unfortunately it didn't pan out. Okay. Nope. Alrighty. Well, thank you, Zarnex. Thanks for jumping on the restream on such short notice. Yep, no problem. Uh, looking at the schedule, looks like our next scheduled race is not until next Monday, but I, I fully expect that to change in the upcoming few days. So uh, be on the lookout for a future Zelda 2 round of 16 races. Uh, thank you for joining us, joining me for the interview, Zarnex. Yeah, thank you. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the race, and we'll see you next time.